This is the Ted Wallachian Podcast. Brought to you by Tom's Place. For the finest in men's clothing at unbeatable prices, it's Tom's Place at 190 Baldwin in the heart of Kensington Market. Tom's Place will suit you. And Helenda's The Meat People. Enjoy their award-winning products at selected Metro, Sobeys, Fortino's, and Foodland locations. Helenda's The Way Sausage Should Taste. And now, here's Ted. My special guest this week has been a top-rated star in HGTV in both Canada and the United States since 2008. He has appeared on more than 300 television episodes on numerous shows, including Scott's Vacation House Rules, which returns for its third season, Monday, April 11th, 9 p.m. on HGTV. Meanwhile, he's currently hosting a four-part special titled Scott's Own Vacation House, Mondays, 9 p.m. on the aforementioned HGTV. It's also streaming on Stack TV. Welcome, real estate investor. A renovator and host, uh, Scott McGilvery. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you as well, Ted. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm thrilled that you're here, and I appreciate you taking the time. Congratulations to you on Season 3 and on your exciting uh, n- a new project. Now, th- this this project, uh, we, we, should, we should clarify it, because some people might think, well, this is, unless you've seen the promo, uh, you know, Scott bought himself a little cottage somewhere, you know. It, well, it's, it, first of all, it's not a cottage. It's it's like a it's you don't know it's it's a huge chunk of property. It reminds me of uh, of, of the the Corleone compound in Godfather Two because <laughs> it's just a collection of what what four or five buildings. There's uh yeah there's one two three four five six there's six buildings on the property. It's like an it's an old compound that was built in the seventies. Um, you know, several cottages put together for a big family, but we saw it as a great opportunity for what I do on the show, which is the rental potential of it. And it was a big property. And I, when I first saw it, I said, somebody should do this. This would be amazing. It's like the profitability is there, but it's a, it's a very overwhelming property as well. So I called my wife and I said, you know what? Mm -hmm. I think we got to try this. And I, we drove up the next day. I showed her the property and we put an offer in right there on the spot. And I said, this is it. There's no turning back. We're making it happen. And uh, and that's how this idea was born, and we decided to tackle everything all at once, and we've made a show about it and brought the kids in. It's it's the largest uh, investment that we've tackled as a family, for sure. Now, it's up in the Corthus, right, which is a beautiful part of southern Ontario. For people who have never been, or I guess it isn't southern Ontario, but it's a beautiful part of Ontario, the Corthus is, is gorgeous. I mean, there's a collection of lakes, and it's just and it's for your purposes, as you always mention, it's a four season location. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, we've uh, we've been already using it. Uh, our first guests, our first rental experience is coming up in a few weeks. We didn't want to rent it before the show aired, so we have guests coming in April. Um, but we've been up there a whole bunch of times. It's easy to get to all winter. Obviously, the summer is the peak season in that region. But it, it's really, um, you know, there's something magical about cottage country. I just absolutely love getting out of the city, being on the water. Uh, the property, fortunately, has a, a lot of sandy shoreline along with it transitions from sandy to rocky. So there's a couple different dynamics to it. It's a really, really unique space. And as you mentioned, you're, 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 you're joined by your wife, Sabrina, your daughters, Layla and Maya. Plus, uh, you're uh, you're very close to design partner Deborah Salmoni, and you've got a new addition this year, Giselle. Absolutely, is she a designer as well? G- Giselle is a designer. She's uh, one of our junior designers who works with Deborah. And this was, you know, this project came fast and furious. It was not planned to be a show. It was purchased. We were working on it, and. The timing of the universe, uh, (laughs) you know, and the pandemic and everything, it really um, slowed down our ability to go out and work on outside projects. So this became an opportunity to film something that we could just do within our own uh, family unit with our close uh, team. So we decided, all right, we'll bring in the family and we'll also bring in the greater design team because there's a lot to tackle in a short period of time. I think people will love Giselle as much as they've loved Deborah on the show. They're, you know, we we all get along extremely well. Mm-hmm. We love having a good time. 
Um, my wife, who is – she's super busy as a teacher, and you can imagine how busy she's been the last two years being a teacher has not been easy – um, balancing that plus this yeah. investment and getting the kids, you know, the kids were doing remote schooling. So I would bring the kids up while I was working on it. They were doing classes in one of the cottages while I was renovating the one next door <laughs> while we were trying to figure everything out. It was, it was complicated. It was not an easy <laughs> time to be doing this kind of project, but it's, it seems to have worked out. At least you will see how it's worked out uh, as the show unfolds. Yeah, Scott McGilvery is my guest. He is the host of, well, two programs. Scott's own vacation house, which currently airs on HGTV. It streams on Stack TV. And then the season three of Scott's Vacation House Rules premieres on Monday, April the 11th. So so there you are. It's you, your wife, your daughters, and, and two other. It's you and five women. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like? It's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. There's a lot of opinions. I don't know how to ask that question without sounding sexist, you know? <laughs> well, listen, I'm outnumbered in my immediate family. I got two daughters and my wife. And then with the design team, I've got Deborah and Giselle. Um, <laughs> I think it's, it's just more about all the different ideas. It's trying to be able to take in all the design ideas, plus... Some you know taking into consideration some of the things my kids would like to see, and then on top of that, coordinating with my wife, it's just there's a lot of stakeholders in a project like this, which makes it interesting, exciting, but also a real challenge. Um, and we we ran into mm-hmm. a lot of obstacles this this past year with with supply chain issues and materials not being available. You know, you make a plan and then all of a sudden it's like, nope, none of that stuff exists anymore. It's not coming. The the, the doors are going to take six weeks instead of two weeks and lumber shortages. We had to, we actually, in, in the first episode, uh, we took down a big tree on the property and it ended up, we ended up using all the lumber from that because we couldn't get the timbers for the front portico. So we had to, you know, be pretty clever i think and and be on our toes at all times and uh and that was not simple but it was really it's really been a strange year for the construction and real estate space i'll tell you that much yeah i would imagine it's just been a strange year overall you know you mentioned that this is this is this is a a personal stake for you as opposed to taking somebody else's property and transforming it now you've purchased your own because it is a personal thing how does it alter your approach initially? Well, it's it's funny because we get into a rhythm with the main series. So, you know, Scott's Vacation House Rules, season three. Obviously, we're doing we're doing bigger projects than we've done. The branding is next level compared to what we've done in the past. And it's the most episodes that we've ever done in a year as well. So you put on top of that the fact that we are now doing my own properties it completely changes that rhythm, right? It's not working for clients. So I find it easier to help someone else renovate their place than to renovate my own. When I start working on my own, I start second guessing. I start looking at new options. Um, whereas when I'm doing it for someone else, I'm always like, nope, here's the plan. We're sticking to it. Trust me, this is going to work. And <laughs> but when it's your own property, you you really get into it emotionally and uh, when you've got your family involved you know everybody's got an opinion and you're trying to keep everybody happy it's it was it was a tough one this is the first time we've done a massive personal project in in about 5 years since we built our own home with moving the McGilvries. um and so it reminded me that there's there's a lot of stress when doing a, a renovation like this yeah I, I would imagine that there is, and, and I'm probably one of the first, at least in my mind, I'm thinking if I'm sitting there looking at a cottage or even a piece of property, what is job one, especially if it's a renovation? Like, what do I do first? Oh, well, first things first is to come up with a plan. That's, you know, the, one of the first rule is to, to have a plan, right? 
and um, do your research. Understand yeah. what the rental market is and what people are looking for. What is the biggest asset? Sometimes the property is not playing to its biggest asset. Is it the waterfront that's the asset? Is it um, the the land? Is it the view? Is it the actual layout of the cottage? There's so many different factors. And identifying what the primary goal is right off the bat is, is where you want to start. So... And that usually leads to our theme. In in my own vacation house series, what we started with, one of the properties, which was the most obvious, it's like, okay, there's a beach down below. This feels like an old retro cabin. It's, you know, it, it was all carpets and wood paneling, but you've got this beautiful beach out front. Why don't we brand this as a beach house and lean into what we're, what, what our best assets are? So we cleaned up the beach, we moved a few trees to to capture the view, uh, and then we built the entire cottage to reflect the idea of a beach house, brightened everything up, freshened everything up, put in new kitchens and bathrooms. So really the first job is decide what the consistent theme is and what um, what the best personality trait of the property is and exploit it. And once you've done that, you've decided, okay, this is where we're going with this. Where we're, this is the theme that we're looking at. This is what we want people, this is what we want to draw people up to, to our destination. What is, what is the first physical area of the cottage? Like, what is the most important area? People talk about, you know, when you're doing home improvements, that, you know, uh, the kitchen and the bathroom, that's number one and number two before anything else is considered. Is that the same with the cottage? No. It's not. It's actually different. And this is where a lot of people misstep ah. on these renovations. So the most important part is... Because people are staying over. Yeah, is, is the shore appeal, right? It's the what is the waterfront and the exposure to the shore look like? Not the curb appeal, not when you drive up necessarily. You want that to be nice. But how is the property reflected especially with waterfront properties, how is the experience um, to what the what this property has to offer? Inside becomes secondary. So yes, kitchens and bathrooms, of course, are still important. But gathering spaces are, are primary, are paramount in a situation like this. So there's three things that I typically uh, advise people on when buying these properties that you need to take into consideration when you're renovating, right? How many beds for heads, right? How many seats for eats? Does it match? Mm -hmm. And then the last one, whether you like (laughs) it or not, hoops for poops, right? You have to make sure that if you've got uh, double occupancy in every bedroom, and let's say the, the cottage has four bedrooms and it can accommodate 10 people. So one of these bedrooms will probably have two sets of bunk beds so four kids could sleep in one room. You want to make sure the dining area has... 10 seats and 10 place settings and you want to make sure that there's ideally for every five guests that a property accommodates you want a minimum of one bathroom so you would need you know four bedrooms two bathrooms a good amount of dining space for 10 people it's this recipe of making sure that everything is consistent and what a lot of people try to do is maybe they squeeze too many people into a property, but they don't have the resources to support it, and it impacts the guest experience. So it is there. There obviously are different rules when renovating a vacation home than renovating a primary residence. Um, so you do need to take these into consideration before you make the big investment into these properties. Ted Walshin returns in a moment. And once again, joining me from Tom's Place, Tom Mahalik, 190 Baldwin in the heart of Kensington Market. The weather has warmed up significantly. Boy, you can smell weddings in the air, can't you, Tom? 100%, and our wedding business has been quite strong. And I would like to uh, tell our customers and friends that at Tom's Place, we know how to sell a tuxedo. A lot of the regular stores don't even carry tuxedos. Tom's Place has a great selection of fabulous and fantastic tuxedos at prices that we can all afford. You're looking for a peak lapel, a shawl lapel, a notch lapel, blue, black. Tom's Place has great selection. And at Tom's Place, we have the staff that are knowledgeable. We have the tailors to make sure that your clothing is ready on time. And if you're looking for your groomsmen, 
we have suits in seven or eight different colors that will suit them. So please, for all your wedding needs, come to Tom's Place, where we still have people picking up the phone and answering your questions and your call. No email, shme mail, your mail, whose mail, who's there, who's not there. We're in the store. All right, 190 Baldwin is where you'll find Tom's Place in the heart of Kensington Markets. Hey, let me take a moment to tell you about my friends at Helenda's. They are the meat people. You know, I've been a fan of their products for years now, and without a doubt, they make some of the best sausage in Ontario. They are multiple award winners, having captured the Ontario's finest meat competitions, coveted award of excellence on three occasions, in addition to dozens of individual product awards. Hollandes has also received the Grand Champion Ribbon at the past two Royal Winter Fairs ready-to-eat meat snack competitions. So whether you're preparing a charcuterie board or a full-blown sit-down dinner for your friends or family, you'll find Hollandes' award-winning products at fine meat shops throughout the province, now including selected Metro, Sobeys, Fortino's, and Foodland stores, along with their seven Hollandes locations. Their barbecued kielbasa is my favorite. On a fresh bun with horseradish, it is out of this world. But don't just take my word for it. Judge for yourself. On your barbecue, in your kitchen, or straight from the refrigerator. Hollandes, the way sausage should taste. Now back to Ted Wallachan. So when you sit down to do this program with with your family, you, you sit down and you discuss as a family with your wife, with your daughters, with, with your design team. You say, listen, this is the way I like this to look. I think that this cottage would or this cabin would work with this. This would be good here. And you can come to some kind of consensus. And, and at the end of the day, if you if you can't come to a consensus, somebody has to make the final decision, which is going to be you and your wife. Now, when you're working with, with a client and a client insists on going this direction and you're thinking, that's totally wrong, it's going to be disastrous, how do you deal with that without without losing them or insulting them? Well, uh, it doesn't all, there's no perfect answer to that question. And some people have really lousy taste. Some people have yeah. terrible taste. And some people, uh, you know, are pretty strong in their opinions on certain things. And that comes, I would say, one episode every season. And there is one this season on this on the show. And we'll see if the audience can spot it. But there's always an episode where the homeowners and I don't necessarily see eye to eye when it comes to getting to cross the finish line. And it's Sometimes I'll concede to what it is that they want. And if I'm like, are you sure you absolutely want that? I'm telling you right now, it's not the best use of your investment. Uh, and other times I'll go for it. And and there's, it's not always a perfect match, let's say. Uh, but what I'm trying to do is to make sure, I'm mm-hmm. trying to do what's best for the property and the long-term investment. And that, that's how I go into it. I said, I'm thinking about you and your family and the long-term investment of this property. And there are some weird, wacky, and personal twists that people want to put into projects. And I try to steer them away. You know, we've I had one family that was really into cats. And they're like, can we do a cat theme and do all these? I said, you know what? A lot of people don't book their holidays based on cats necessarily. <laughs> I think you're narrowing the market yeah. slightly here. Nobody's like, hey, let's vacation at the cat house. So, you know. I try to be reasonable yeah. and rational with individuals, but I, I would say I win most oh, yeah. battles, but not all, Ted. Yeah, I, unless the, the the crazy old cat lady's got 110 cats of her own sitting in her apartment is coming up to rent for a couple of weeks. You're probably uh, out of luck in, in, in that case. Yeah. One of the great things that you – fortunate things that you've got is you've got Deborah working with you. And I always enjoy watching the program because every week – just as you're deciding what the theme of the of of the the property is going to be, she pulls up in her car, and and out of the back of her car comes uh, like an old toboggan or an old pair of skis or something that that's going to lend itself to the theme of of, of the cottage. Do you know what that's going to be? <laughs> you you raise a really interesting production question. So there's what you see on the show, and then there's what happens behind the scenes. <laughs> so I'll let you behind the curtain slightly. Yeah. Um, it naturally happened in the first right. season of the show where 
we were finding items that were a great representation of the brand or the theme we were going for. And we love branding our properties. I, f- I feel like you, if you don't brand your property, you're doing yourself a disservice. It's like having a store with no name on it, right? It, who's going to come shop there? So each property, we try to give it a name. We give it a theme. And... Uh, and I challenged Deborah in the first season. I'm like, what we need is like an item that represents what our brand is going to be for every property. And we thread it through. Um, so she said, do you want me to bring like a design inspiration item? I'm like, yeah, let's start with a design inspiration. So she started to bring these items. And I'm telling you, Ted, some of them were terrible. <laughs> some of these items were just just way off. So now we've <laughs> turned it into a bit of a game. I'm like, the challenge is to bring something that works with the theme that we've agreed upon. So if we agree that this is going to be a ski chalet, let's see what you can come up with. Get creative. Mm-hmm. But, you know, some and sometimes she nails it. Like, most of the time she does a great job. And sometimes I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. We should have talked about this beforehand. But we roll <laughs> with it. You know, Deborah and I are longtime friends, and we always have a good time. And we always make it work, right? Like, we're going to figure this out. Because that's just who we are. And if we didn't love what we were doing, we wouldn't be doing it. So I think that translates well on the show. Yeah. You know, there, there are a number of reasons. My guest is Scott McGilvery, who is a guest, uh, or the host, I should say, of Scott's uh, own Vacation House, which is currently on HGTV. It's also streaming on Stack TV. And then on the 11th of April, Monday night at 9 p.m. on HGTV, it's the premiere of Season 3 of Scott's Vacation House Rules. People um, fix up their properties and and convert them for, to rentals for a number of different reasons. And, and in some cases, they do it because they want to keep the, the cottage in the family. It may have been passed along after someone had passed away, but in order for them to keep it, it's a financial burden. And so you do this in many cases to keep a family legacy going. Honestly, Ted, this one, unfortunately, comes straight from personal experience. We had a a cottage growing up as kids. I was going to say. And uh, and unfortunately, when, uh, you know, when my father had passed away and then my mom couldn't keep the cottage and the family and we didn't necessarily have the guidance or the the wherewithal to to you know, turn it into a short-term vacation property, and it became a financial burden. And I still, to this day, look back and say that was one of the most unfortunate things that happened, is losing the family cottage. And I see it happening still to this day. And I always say, life's too short to learn from your own mistakes. You have to learn from someone else's. And if I can help people come up with solutions to keep those properties in the family, it's there's memories attached to these properties. There's a legacy attached to these properties. You know, if you've got a great vacation home, um, it shouldn't be a financial burden. There are solutions to make it affordable and even profitable um, so that future generations can enjoy and uh, bask in the in the same experiences that uh, the original intentions were for that property. So I do I do enjoy helping um, people solve that problem. And how did this all begin for you, um, the, the the renovations, the the idea of taking properties and flipping it? Is it just because of personal experience or is it just something that you grew up wanting to do? Um, I started... Like, so when did it all begin? Yeah, so I started investing in real estate as a fairly young individual. I was in my 20s and I started with student rental properties Um. And what happened is I got Mm -hmm. into student rental properties out of necessity. Um, I had my friends and I were renting a property and the landlord sold the house and kicked us out and we had nowhere to live and there were no rentals available. And (laughs) we had no we were calling realtors. We were calling everything in the in the newspaper and that was posted. And it turns out that one of the real estate agents said, well, if you really need a place that quickly, you should think about buying a property. I'm like, I can't buy a property. What are you talking about? And uh, I went to go see it anyway. I went to go see this house. I'm like, boy, this would be perfect for my roommates and I. Um, And that's when the realtor said, well, why don't we, why don't I set you up with a mortgage broker to see what's possible? And I never thought that was possible at all. But I ended up using my student loan as was the solution. I used my student loan as a down payment at the time. I bought a property in Guelph, mm-hmm. which is where I went to school, 
and um, I rented out the rooms to my friends, and it was it was a, a real stretch. It was a slightly desperate moment, but it turned into a business model. I recognized the business model and was able to repeat it in the following years by pulling equity out of the first property to buy another one. And then I sold a property, and I was able to buy two more from there. And uh, eventually, I had a portfolio of about 25 student rental properties, and I realized this is what I want to do. I love doing this. I see a huge amount of upside. Um, I got into TV by accident. And just being excited about showing people how you can really go from – real estate is an opportunity to go from having you know very little financial means to being able to create a, a, a legacy for your family in terms of uh, what type of profitability is available. And, and while you were doing this, uh, doing these flipping, uh, who was doing the renovation? I mean, were, are, were you, are you naturally a gifted uh, um, a guy with, with tools? Are, are you a, 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 a handyman? Because I'm, I'm, I'm one of those who's not – the only time I'm a handyman is when I'm by myself, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so who was doing this? Because it's costly to get somebody to do that. Uh, you know, at the beginning, you there was a lot of things I didn't know. I had the ambition for it. I was excited. I love uh, renovating. I worked part time as a painter. Um, I had done part time carpentry work, working for contractors all through high school and university. Um, so I was handy. Yes, I could build things. I liked building furniture. That was a hobby I had. So I was able to, you know, do things like framing and drywall and laying floors. Um, and I did as much as I could because I couldn't afford to hire anyone at the beginning. So things happened very slowly, organically, and not with the top quality in mind, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, not with the best results necessarily. And it wasn't <laughs> until a few years later that I decided to become a licensed contractor and build my own team and really polish my skills so that I could build to the quality that I do now and to have the right team in place to be able to consistently repeat that process. So now you, you've, you, you've built this, uh, this entire empire here where you've got real estate holdings and, and, and you're dealing with, I mean, it's just, I'd love to have, to have you come back on the show sometime to talk about the things that you do in the business side of it because there's a whole different Scott McGilvery than the one that people see on television Monday nights on HGTV. So perhaps we, we, we could set that up. And, 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 and I was thinking about you the other day, around the corner from where I live is where, where I shop quite often, it's a home hardware. Yes. And I walk into the home hardware, and, and they've got a, a, a sale on, on Scott McGillivray lighting. And, and I'm thinking, I, I, need, I need to get myself a dining room light. And I'm thinking, maybe I'll get one of these. And, and if I get this, like, you won't be staring down at me or anything. Well, you're not like, <laughs> like Google that listens in on you, right? <laughs> no, I think things are – it's, no? it's a lot simpler than that. No, we have – home hardware carries our line of uh, okay. lighting, flooring, and vanities. But uh, you made a good choice if you bought one, though. I'll tell you that much, Ted. I haven't said, I've been fig- figured out which one I want to, but I do shop there quite often, and to be honest with you, and I, I quite enjoy them. I, I had mentioned that actually to to uh, to, to Mark Cullen uh, a while ago. I had him on the program, and I said one of the things I like about the fact is is that, is that they are locally owned. Yes, to me that means a lot. Absolutely, absolutely, good call. Well, listen again. Congratulations to you on on season three upcoming, and and on Scott's own vacation. House, uh, I, I look forward to watching both as, as I have for, for years, and, and I wish you uh, all the best. And thanks very much for taking the time. It is much appreciated. Scott. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Ted. The Ted Walsh and Podcast has been brought to you by Tom's Place. For the finest in men's clothing at unbeatable prices, it's Tom's Place at 190 Baldwin in the heart of Kensington Market. Tom's Place will suit you. And Helenda's The Meat People. Enjoy their award-winning products at selected Metro, Sobeys, Fortino's, and Foodland locations. Helenda's The Way Sausage Should Taste. The Ted Walsh and Podcast is produced by Joey Roselli. Technical production by Paul Gatt. Music by Bike Thieves. I'm Becky Coles. Submit your questions and comments to ted at twmedia.ca.